Since it appears about 75 million people saw articles or social media posts about the recent Super Flare story, and since virtually none of them were adequate communications of relevant science to the public, let's go over this here, starting with the Super Flare and what it is. These are hundreds to thousands of times stronger than most of the sun's normal solar flares, but they erupt by similar mechanisms, colliding magnetic fields above a sunspot. Modern day solar storms can and have taken out satellites, transformers, power grids, networks, infrastructure, and more. But in a super flare, the blast is so dramatic that the electromagnetic impact to Earth is massive and global. A solar storm concern in general is the fact that these solar storms deliver an electromagnetic shockwave to our planet, and they induce electric currents and unusual magnetic effects. And it is well recognized that a big solar storm, certainly one that would come from a super flare, would destroy all the power grids, electrical devices, and even electrical wires. The United States government study a few years ago said that 90% of humans could die due to the lack of infrastructure from water purification and distribution to food cultivation, communication and travel, heating and banks and gasoline and 911 and the internet, etc. If you remember the movie Goldeneye, it's not a bad visual of how severe the electromagnetic pulse can be. Everything electrical is destroyed and it is well known that it wouldn't even take a super flare to cause this worldwide. So a super flare would be a very unwelcome thing for our sun to throw our way. It would mean the complete loss of the modern world needing to be rebuilt. It would take decades, but in the meantime, the starvation, thirst, suffering and destabilization would be unimaginable. It is also noteworthy that severe solar-driven electrical disasters preceded technology, as many scientists, including Dr. Robert Schock, have shown, where the overcharging and magnetospheric compression by the shockwave juices up the lowest L-shell magnetic fields. It's creating the same situation that we see on a magnetar, where the downward discharge occurs and blasts the surface, a lightning bolt the size of a continent. So now the important question, is this something to know about for our future or not? Well, this new study is suggesting that sun-like stars produce these events every century. Now that's a very scary thought, but it also can't be placed one-to-one -one right onto our sun. They didn't find all sun-like stars blasting super flares every century, but rather there's a range. Some of them blasted far more often and others far less often. While this doesn't overrule the sun-specific studies that do exist, it does reconfirm the fact that the sun has these flares. And so, let's go to the most widely cited solar super flare analysis to answer the question of, when is the next one coming? The lowest level super flares likely happen every 150 to 200 years. Those would take out global power like we showed at first. The biggest ones happen every 3,000 to 6,000 years in the X500 to X1000 range, and those are what would cause that lightning of the gods from the sky. The lowest level still means the end of our modern world and a new age of Earth, and those happen every 150 to 200 years. We are 165 years from the last one, in 1859. So yes, this matters a great deal, and it's why they've spent hundreds of millions on sun-watching satellites and telescopes to hopefully give them advanced warning of these solar storms. Subscribe for daily updates. I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.